Introduction to SQL. Welcome to SQL Bold, a series of interactive lessons and exercises designed to help you quickly learn SQL right in your browser. What is SQL? SQL, or Structured Query Language, is a language designed to allow both technical and non-technical users query, manipulate, and transform data from a relational database. And due to its simplicity, SQL databases provide safe and scalable storage for millions of websites and mobile applications. Did you know there are many popular SQL databases, including SQLite, MySQL, Postgres, Oracle, and Microsoft SQL Server. All of them support the common SQL language standard, which is what this site will be teaching but each implementation can differ in the additional features and storage types it supports. Relational databases. Before learning the SQL syntax, it's important to have a model for what a relational database actually is. A relational database represents a collection of related two-dimensional tables. Each of the tables are similar to an Excel spreadsheet with a fixed number of named columns, the attributes or properties of the table, and any number of rows of data. For example, if the Department of Motor Vehicles had a database, you might find a table containing all the known vehicles that people in the state are driving. This data might, be, might need to store the model name, type, number of wheels, and number of doors of each vehicle, for example. In such a database, you might find additional related table tables containing information such as a list of all registered drivers in the state, the types of driving licenses that can be granted, or even violation or, or even driving violations for each driver. By learning SQL, the goal is to learn how to answer specific questions about this data, like what types of vehicles are on the road have less than four wheels, or how many models of cars does Tesla produce to help make better decisions down the road. About the lessons. Since most users will be learning SQL to interact with, existing, with an existing database, the lessons begin by introducing you to the various parts of a, an SQL query. The later lessons will then show you how to alter the table or schema and create new tables from scratch. Each lesson will introduce a different concept and end with an interactive exercise. Go at your pace and don't be afraid to spend time experimenting with the exercises before continuing. If you happen to be f familiar with SQL already, you can skip ahead using the links in the top right, but we would recommend you work through the lessons anyways. By the end, we hope you will have, we will hope, we hope you will be able to have a strong foundation for, us for using SQL in your projects and beyond. SQL Lesson 1, Select Queries 101. To retrieve data from a SQL database, you need to write select statements, which are often colloquially, co colloquially <laughs> referred to as queries. A query in itself is just a statement that declares what data we are looking for, where to find it in the database, and optionally, how to transform it before it is returned. It has a specific syntax, though, which is what we are going to learn in the following exercises. As we mentioned in the introduction, you can think of a table in SQL as a type of entity, i.e. dogs, and each row in that table has a specific instance of that type, i.e. a pug, a beagle, a different colored pug, etc. This means that the columns would then represent the common properties shared by all instances of that entity, 
i.e. color of fur, length of table, length of tail, etc. And given a table of data, the most basic query we could write would be one that selects for a couple columns properties of the table with all the rows instances. Example. This select query for a, speci for a specific column. Select column, comma, another column, comma, etc. from my table. The result of this query will be a two-dimensional set of rows and columns, effectively a copy of the table, but only with the columns that we requested. If we want to retrieve absolutely all columns of data from a table, we can use the asterisk shorthand in place of listing all the column names individually. Select star from my table. This query in particular is really useful because it's a simple way it's a simple way to inspect a table by dumping all the data at once. Exercise. We will be using a database with data about some of some of Pixar's classic movies for most of our exercises. This first exercise will will only involve the movies table. And the default query below currently shows all the properties of each movie. To continue on to the next lesson, alter the query to find the exact information we need for each task. So first we want the title of each film. So we got, then we want the director. Then we want the title and director. Then we want the um, title and year. And then we want all SQL Lesson 2, Queries with Constraints, Part 1. Now we know how to select for specific columns of data from a table. But if you had a table with 100 million rows of data, reading through all the rows would be inefficient and perhaps even impossible. In order to filter certain results from being returned, we need to use a WHERE clause in the query. The clause is applied to each row of data by checking specific column values to determine whether it should be included in the results or not. Here's an example. Select column, another column, from my table, where, condition, and or another condition. More complex clauses can be constructed by joining numerous and or, or logical keywords, i.e. num wills greater than or equal to four and doors less than or equal to two. And below are some useful operators that you can use for numerical data, i.e integer or floating point. We have these operators, equals, not equals, less than, less than or equal, greater than, greater than or equal. We have between and and. The condition is number is within the range of two values, inclusive, not between, and, and. number is is not within the range of two values, inclusive within number exists in a list not in number does not exist in a list in addition to making the results more manageable to understand writing clauses to constrain the set of rows returned also allows the query to run faster to due to the reduction in unnecessary data being returned did you know as you might have noticed by now SQL doesn't require you to write the keywords all capitalized, but as a convention, it helps people distinguish SQL keywords from column and table names and makes the query easier to read. Using the right constraints, 
find the information we need from the movies table for each task. Find the movie with a row ID of six. Find the movies released uh, in the years between 200 or 2000 and 2010. Find the movies re uh, not released between 2000 and 2010. Find the first five Pixar movies in their release year. default uh, orders. SQL Lesson 3, Queries with Constraints, Part 2. When writing WHERE clauses with columns containing text data, SQL supports a number of useful operators to do things like case-insensitive <laughs> case string comparison and wildcard pattern matching. We show a few common text data specific operators below. Equal, not equal, like, not like, percent, used anywhere in a string to match a sequence of zero or more characters. Underscore, used, used in a string to match a single character. Again, only with like or not like. In string exists in a list. Not in string does not exist in a list. Did you know all strings must be quoted so that the query parser can distinguish words in the string from SQL keywords? We should note that while most database implementations are quite efficient when using these operators, full, full text search is best left to dedicated libraries like Apache, Lucene, or Sphinx. These libraries are designed specifically to do full text search, and as a result are more efficient and can support a wider variety of search features, including internationalization and advanced queries. Exercise. Here's the definition of a query with a WHERE clause again. Go ahead and try to write some queries with the operators above to limit the results to the information we need in the task below. Movies directed by John Lasset. Lasseti, Lasseti. Find all the movies and director not directed by John Lasseter. Find all the wall. Uh, Wally -E movies. SQL Lesson Four Filtering and Sorting Query Results. Even though the data in a database may be unique, the results of any particular query may not be. Take our movies table, for example. Many different movies can be released the same year. In such cases, SQL provides a convenient way to discard rows that have a duplicate column value by using the distinct keyword. Select distinct 
column, another column from my table where conditions. Since the, since the distinct keyword will blindly remove duplicate rows, we will learn in a future lesson how to discard duplicates based on specific columns using grouping and the group by clause. Ordering results. Unlike, unlike our neatly ordered table in the last few lessons, most data in real databases are added in no particular column order. As a result, it can be difficult to read through and understand the results of a query as the size of a table increases to thousands or even millions of rows. To help with this, SQL provides a way to sort your results by a given column in ascending or descending order using the order by clause. Order by column ascending or descending. When an order by clause is specified, each row is sorted alphanumerically based on the specific column's value. In some databases, you can also specify a collation to better sort data containing international text. Limiting results to a subset. Another clause which is commonly used with the order by clause are the are the limit and offset clauses, which are useful optimization to indicate to the database the subset of results you care about. The limit will reduce the number of rows to return, and the optional offset will specify where to begin counting the number of rows from. Limit, num limit, offset, num, uh, num offset. If you think about websites like Reddit or Pinterest, the front page is a, is a list of links sorted by popularity and time, and each subsequent uh, page can be represented by sets of links at different offsets in the database. Using these clauses, the database can then execute queries faster and more efficiently by processing and returning only the requested content. Did you know? If you are curious about when the limit and offset are applied relative to, to the other parts of a query, they are generally done last after the other clauses have been applied. We'll touch more on this in lesson number 12, order of execution after intro introdu introducing a few more parts of the query. Exercise. There are a few concepts in this lesson, but all are pretty straightforward to apply. To spice things up, we've gone and scrambled the movies table for you in the exercise to better, better mimic what kind of data you might see in real life. Try and use the necessary keywords and clauses introduced above in your queries. List all directors of Pixar movies alphabetically without duplicates. Pixar movies. List the last four Pixar movies released or uh, ordered from most recent to least. Uh, 
us the first five Pixar movies sorted alphabetically. First five sorted. List the next five movies, uh, Pixar movies, sorted alphabetically. Sequel review. Simple select queries. You've done a good job getting to this point. Now that you've gotten a taste of how to write a basic query, you need to practice writing queries that solve actual problems. In the exercise below, you will be working with a different table. This table instead contains information about a few of the most populous cities in North America, including their population, geospatial location in the world, and geospatial location in the world. Did you know? Positive latitudes correspond to the northern hemisphere, and positive longitudes correspond to the eastern hem hemisphere. Since North America is in the north, it is north of the equator and west of the prime meridian, all of the cities in the list have positive latitudes and negative longitudes. Try and write some queries to find the information requested in the tasks you know. You may have to use a different combination of clauses in your query for each task. Once you're done, continue on to the next lesson to learn about queries that span multiple tables. List all the Canadian cities with their populations. Order all the cities in the United States by their latitude from north to south. List all the cities west of Chicago, ordered from west to east.
lists the two largest cities in Mexico by population. List the third and fourth largest cities by populations in the United States and their population. SQL Lesson 6 Multi-Table Queries with Joins Up to now, We've been working with a single table, but entity, table, but entity data in the real world is often broken down into pieces and stored across multiple orthogonal tables using a process known as normalization. Data normalization or database normalization. Database normalization is useful because it minimizes duplicate data in any single table and allows for data in the database to grow independently, independently of, each, of each other, i.e. types of car engines can grow independently of each type of car. As a trade-off, queries get slightly more complex since they have to be able to find data from different parts of the database, and performance issues can arise when working with many large tables. In order to answer questions about an entity that has data spanning multiple tables in a normalized database, we need to learn how to write a query that can combine all the data and pull out exactly the information we need. Multi-table queries with joins. Tables that share information about a single entity need to have a primary key that identifies that entity uniquely across the database. One common primary key type is an auto incrementing integer because they are space efficient. But it can also be a string hash value so long as it is unique. Using the join clause in a query, we can combine row data across two separate tables using this unique key. The first of the joins that we introduced is the that we introduce is the inner join. Select column from my table and or join another table on my table.id equals another table.id. The inner join is a process, process that matches rows from the first table and the second table, which have the same key, as defined by the on constraint to create a result row with the combined columns from both tables. After the tables are joined, the other clauses we learned previously are then applied. Did you know? You might see queries where the inner join is written simply as join. These two are equivalent, but you will continue to refer to these joins as inner joins because they make the, the query easier to read, uh, but easier to read once you start using other types of joins, which will be introduced in the following lesson exercise. We've added a new table to the Pixar database so that you can try practicing some joins. The box office table stores information about the ratings and sales of each particular Pixar movie, and the movie ID column in that table corresponds to the ID column in the movies table, one to one. Try and solve the tasks below using the inner join introduced above. Find the domestic and international sales for each movie.
Domestic sales, international sales. show the sales numbers for each movie that did better internationally rather than domestically. List all movies by their ratings in descending order. Sequel Lesson 7, Outer Joins. Depending on how you want to analyze data, the inner join we used last, last lesson might not, be able, might not be sufficient because the resulting table only contains data that belongs in both of the tables. If the two tables have asymmetric data, which can easily easily happen when data is entered in different stages then we want to have then we would have to use a left join right join or full join instead to ensure that the data you need is not left out of the results like the inner join these three new joins have to specify which column to join the data on when joining table A to table B, a left join simply includes rows from A regardless of whether a matching row is found in B. The right join is the same but, reserved, re but reversed, keeping rows in B regardless of whether a match is found in A. Finally, a full join simple, simply means that rows from both tables are kept regardless of whether a matching row exists in the other table. When using any of these new joins, you will likely have to write additional logic to deal with nulls in the result in the result and constraints. More on this in the next lesson. Did you know you might see queries written these see queries written these joins written as left outer join right outer join or full outer join but the outer keyword is really kept for sql 92 compatibility and these queries are simply equivalent to left join right join and full join respectively exercise in this exercise you are going to be working with a new table which stores fictional data about employees in the film studio and their assigned office buildings some of the buildings are new, so that they don't have any employees in them yet, but we need to find some information about them regardless. Since our browser SQL database is somewhat limited, only the left join is supported in the exercise below. Find the list of all buildings that have employees.
find the list of all buildings and their capacity. List all buildings with the distinct employee rows, roles in each building, including empty buildings. SQL Lesson 8, a short note on nulls. As promised in the, next, in the last lesson, we're going to quickly talk about null values in a SQL database. It's always good to redu reduce the possibility of null values in databases because they require special attention when constructing queries, constraints, certain functions behave differently with null values, and when processing the results. An alternative to null values in your database is to have data type appropriate default values like zero for numerical data, empty strings for text data, etc. But if your database needs to store incomplete data, then null values can be appropriate if the default values will skew later analysis. For example, when taking averages of numerical data. Sometimes, it is also not possible to avoid null values, as we saw in the last lesson when outer joining two tables with asymmetrical data. In these cases, you can test a column for null values in a WHERE clause by using either the isNull or isNotNull constraint. This exercise will be a short review of the last few lessons. We're using the same employees and buildings table from the last lesson, but we've hired a few more people who, have, who haven't yet been assigned a, uh, a building. Find the name and role of all employees who have not yet been, uh, who have not been assigned to a big building. Find the names of the buildings that ho hold no employees.
SQL Lesson 9, Queries with Expressions. In addition to querying and referencing raw column data with SQL, you can also use expressions to write more complex logic on column values in a query. These expressions can use mathematical and string functions along with basic arithmetic to transform values when the query is executed, as shown in this physics example. Let's go to standard. Each database has its own supported set of mathematical string and dict functions that can be used in a query, which you can find in their own respective docs. The use of expressions can save time and extra post-processing of result data, but can also make the query harder to read. So we recommend that when expresses, expressions are used in the select part of the query, they're also given a descriptive alias using the as keyword. Select column expression as expression description from my table. In addition to expressions, regular columns and even tables can, ha can also have aliases to make them easier to reference in the output and as a part of simplifying more complex queries. Exercise you're going to have to use expressions to transform box office data into something easier to understand for the tasks below. List all movies with their combined sa sales in millions of dollars. List all movies and their rating ratings uh, in percent. List all movies that were released on even number of years.
going to break the video up here. That's all for part one of SQL Bolt. Be back later.